Hello, hello, Ederson Oliver here. This is the DNN monthly chat, and this is the July edition. We are recording this at 7 p.m. Eastern time on July 30th. And I almost forgot completely about our monthly commitment. If it was not by Joe, we would, be, we would have missed July completely. So first of all, thank you very much, Joe, for reminding me that. Sure, I, I I woke up the other day and Bob said I had missed it and you were kind enough not to send me a nasty note saying where were you? So uh, we'll, we'll put how we got here today and all the contortions in our memoirs, how's that? Yes, yes, we, we're gonna have some uh, some bloopers by the end, you know, but uh, yeah, it was, it was a long road to get, it was a long road. <laughs> <laughs> to, to be here today. Uh, Scott was not able to make it today because he has a, a, a business trip, but that's fine. It will be just, don't take me wrong, but it will be just the two of us, you know, Joe. So it's all fine, all fine, well, all good. Nice. So let's start here by the blog post, by the blog post in the community forum, sorry, in the community uh, blog. The first one that I want to bring to your attention is the fact that uh, there is a release candidate for DNN 921. There's a blog post posted by Oliver Hine that talks about that release, the first release that has been driven by the community. So very positive there. And that's the first release candidate in a few years, I think. You know, I, we haven't been doing release candidates. And, and what is a release candidate about? Uh, Joe, do you know what is a release candidate? Yes. Don't touch it. No, uh, seriously. Uh, do not upgrade your site with it. Uh, it's uh, strictly for testing. And if you apply it to your site, uh, you may get unwanted benefits that you will have a hard time making them go away. I will tell you that I did uh, download the release candidate and installed it uh, last late last week. Um, took me all of three and a half minutes. Uh, I used uh, NV Quick Fight uh, to do the install. You actually have you actually have to download separately, not part of NV Quick Fight because it's not in the actual uh, list of uh released items but uh the one bug that has driven me crazy ever since uh nine two was released uh is fixed That's which was which, which bug you, was that one uh if you modify a page settings that page gets pushed to the bottom of the page hierarchy oh so and, so th this problem was still there in getting two Nine nine two. Uh, I think so, but um, yeah, maybe maybe the site that I was working on is not nine two, but yep. um, but it is definitely gone in nine two in the nine two one release candidate. Awesome. Um, and uh, the page management uh, UI. Uh, is in fact nicer uh, than the nine nine one one. So yeah, nine one one nine 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 one one was was there was already sorry nine two there was already a new UI for the page management. Yeah, and there's a new one for nine two one. Um, the the drag and drop stuff works seems to work a little bit better. Okay, okay, uh, good. Very good, very good. Actually, as you spoke, uh, Joe, I opened up a DNN 921 that I had installed here as well. So I'm just going around. So that's a release candidate. Now, one thing that Joe did not mention is that the purpose of a release candidate is to give the opportunity for people to download, to try it out, and to report problems because uh, before it's made uh, official. So the release was on July 25th, just a few days ago, and they were running the release candidate before it goes 
uh, live for two weeks. So by August 6th or 7th, you can report problems if you download, if you see a problem there, you may want to report that. But again, you have a two week, two weeks window to report anything that you may see there because by August 6th to 7th, more or less, between those two dates, it will, the 9 to 1 official release will be out. So again, very, very good. Now, let me mention something yeah, here. Just just, just, yeah, just, just one other thing. If I remember the discussion correctly, uh, actual uh, production releases will be released on either Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. I think uh, so that they, you know, they're not going to drop a release uh, on a Friday afternoon and uh, uh, people disappear for the weekend who can react quickly to emergencies. So awesome. there's some. Um, there's some plan and some discipline as to uh, how the community is going to manage uh, the release process. I think also for a, an actual release, uh, it has to be signed off by uh, a, com a community um, representative or representatives and it also has to be signed up by ESW. Awesome. Uh, okay. I didn't know that. Uh, so I think that was, that's what I remember from the discussion that uh, that you know all of the all of the the stakeholders, which is ESW and the community, uh, will approve before uh, the release is dropped. Got it. And and if you need to report a problem. Here's the link. Here's where I had to go. Again, all the links will be posted in the, in the show notes. There's a place to report that on Git. And also, if you are interested to see what was fixed on that release, you may want to, to have a look at the changes in version 921, which can be found in, on, on GitHub as well in the release section. Okay, perfect. Now, I do have a question here, and I don't know if you know the answer to that or not, Joe, but I'm going to just, you know, ask there, ask that to the team that, uh, you know, to, I guess, Oliver Hine and Mitchell Sellers and people that are more involved with the, with the go live is if there is a release candidate, which aspects of the release should we be testing? Should we, should we be focusing on what we see visibly that are the changes? And then should we focus testing on those areas or should we do a general test? I mean, and, and if it's a general test, how much of a general test should we do? I mean, sh what should we try? And I've never, I, maybe, maybe this is obvious to someone, to some people, not to me. Maybe I'm just dumb and, and a bit stupid as well, but I'm not sure exactly what to test specifically in a release candidate. Again, should I test everything? Should I test exactly what has been mentioned as changed? I would like to have some guidance there. Joe, do you know any, any of that? Uh, I, I actually don't. Um, I've always taken the approach that downloading, installing it, and having it bring up the, the default site is test number zero. Uh, <laughs> you know, and and as, as I said, I immediately, after that, I immediately went and looked at uh, the one thorn uh, that has been bothering me. I, I was uh, recently released a uh, 9.2, I think, uh, website, and there were a lot of uh, uh, pages and page arrangements and uh, changing page settings uh, that were required it, you know, as we came down to the end and people were saying, no, no, let's change the, the page hierarchy this way. We need a different URL for that page. Um, and every time I made a page setting trying to remember that I needed to go back and drag the page back to where it's uh, should be, uh, got that it. got old after, uh, 
uh, uh, 50 or 60 times. Uh, yeah, the, the other, and just to mention the other thing that probably still needs some work uh, is how DNN uh, creates uh, HD, um, uh, page aliases uh, okay. for pages. That's not the right word, but you can, you can create URLs that are totally different than what you get out of the box. And yep. uh, occasionally, you end up with a page that has 18 different um, URLs pointed at it. Yeah, and, I think uh, I think Joe, I think that problem. I, I I remember that. I think I think it has been addressed on DNN two already. You know, oh sorry, mm -hmm. DNN nine two. Yeah. Okay. Um, of, of course, the other the other complaint is that in earlier versions of DNN eight, that is there but there's not really a good UI for even getting at them and deleting them. So let's give Got mine it. to some props in that department. True, true. Okay, good. So keep going here with the blog posts. I want to mention uh, the updated Metro 7 skin package uh, done by Matthias Skolman. Matthias, sorry if I'm bastardizing your name, but I don't think I am. In any case, now, uh, the new Metro 7 uh, skin package is now compatible with uh, DNN 8 and DNN 9. I actually have uploaded the skin package because I was curious. I have uploaded to DNN 9 to 1. I applied the, the skin to this page and as you can see it comes up and this is a brand new DNN 9 to 1. So this skin is open source if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so it's available yeah. to be downloaded on GitHub. One note though, is that hopefully it gets enhanced at some point because I think it's not, it's not responsive, but again, it's a good, it's a good example of a, a uh, skin, a theme in DNN. Okay, what else we have there? Oh, and here's the GitHub. And again, all links will be there in the video post. Now, the third one here that I want to bring to your attention, a post from, a post by Ernst Peter. Where do I find an open source module for, da da da, for a blog, for a forum, for this, for that, for a forum. So now there is a resource, well, this post brings to our attention the resource that has been created on the DNN Connect website, which lists a bunch of community extensions, not only modules, but some other types of extensions as well. And right now, as of today, we have 131 extensions listed there from two sexy content to, you know, to pretty much everything that's worth knowing on the DNN space in regards to, to you know, open extensions. You can find it here. You can find the homepage, you can find a download link. You can find a link to documentation, very, very good resource and a resource that was missing for a while here in the community. So thank you very much Ernst to bring this to our attention. I'm not exactly sure who put the list together there and they didn't connect website, but I just want to give a big thanks to the organizers of the Dean and Connect website. Yeah, I, I think that Ernst Peter was the driving force behind that. Okay. And I know there were a couple of other people that were helping. And uh, the uh, core module group uh, that's been working on bringing the core modules uh, up to DNN 9.2 uh, compatibility. Uh, uh, several people from that group were participating. I mean, there's the, the last two months have just been a hotbed of activity in uh, reviving modules, uh, collecting uh, information and organizing it, making it available. And I believe that the idea is that that page may eventually have a, a more prominent home, but I'm not sure about that. Got it. Got it. Yep. And there, and there are people who want to make sure that all of 
the open source modules are actually available on the DNN store. Uh, yeah, I feel so I feel that able to go to the. I feel that we have archaeologists working around the clock, but not only archaeologists, but reviving. I mean, archaeologists that are reviving those, <laughs> those, those. So it's, it's it's more like Jurassic Park. Okay, that's a better <laughs> metaphor, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, and I, I saw I I saw a comment today. There was some people were posting notes about the uh, old DNN gallery module um, that's currently being worked on, and somebody made an observation that he thought maybe it had been 15 years since that had been touched, but I, I think it's probably more like eight to ten. I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> But, uh, you know, uh, the notion of making sure that all the free modules, the, the DNN provided open source modules that they living, they be living in old sites, there will be an upgrade path, uh, for them. Mm -hmm. And I think the, uh, I think, I think the only module that may fall outside of that category is the forum module. Yep. Um, I, th I think there is uh, interest in you know, providing a migration path for the forum module rather than trying to go through the work of bringing it up to 9.2 standards when, you know, that really might not help more than a, a few people and it would be a better service to provide them a way to have a forum module on their sites with and it not being the old dnn forum module Got it. Put it that way awesome we, we're going to touch a little bit more on the you know module core module reviving group in a second but uh, i just want to sure. wrap up the the blog posts with the one with this one from from uh, David Poindexter, it's called "Paving the Way for a Web." Paving the way for a web components-based DNN future, and it's a, it's a technical uh, post, more geared towards developers. But in general, it's really uh, an approach to reuse components that are not heavily based on any particular framework and we can build things in a way more independently of the framework that we are we may have chosen to work with so if you are more developer oriented more you know module creator oriented you may want to have a look at that and as usual david has you know great ideas and his line of nv quick Da, 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 is growing and growing and growing with now NV Quick Progress Bar. And again, there's a whole series of, of nice tools and approaches and methodologies that uh, he does things with NV Quick. Da, da, da. Yes, yes, we should we should say that that, 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 that group of things is growing NV quickly and generating <laughs> and generating a lot of envy. <laughs> it's generate oh no what you are a wordsmith joe i mean i cannot i cannot have said that better you know no way anyway david that's thank you very much for that this one, that was just too easy <laughs> <laughs> well you know what is it to whom not to me to you that's fine you know i'm no phd here i mean i'm just a mere mortal here anyway uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep going here. Uh, okay, so this is more of a general topic, and this is about MVPs. What is an MVP? And what is an MVP, uh, Joe? Uh, most valuable person. Per uh, person, I mean, professional. Uh, I mean, however you translate, but better than that. No, it's not. No, it's person. It's, it's not person? professional. Okay. Yeah, uh, and it's uh, we don't have to be professional. Uh, to be you just have to, you just have to uh, be a person to qualify. To be, we have to be we have to be good people, and yeah, this is uh, this is an award that DNN Corporation has given out in the past and is now 
um, a community award uh, for Pete to recognize people who uh, give extensively uh, back to the DNN community. Uh, and I know, Joe, I have to confess, I have, I have been so glad that the program has been stagnated for the past three years, you know, because now... Me too, me too. <laughs> <laughs> because now, we have to be honest with you guys, we have been coasting for three years as MVPs. Now we have to, we better shape up because otherwise you're going to lose that, you know. Anyway, the nominations I, are actually, open. I, I thought I thought that you and I were personally responsible for killing the MVP <laughs> program. Uh, Maybe. Because once we got elected, they didn't want, they were so embarrassed with what they did, they couldn't bear to bring in more people. Maybe. They, they just said, what have we done? And then they said, yeah. we, we better walk yeah. away. <laughs> anyway, the point is that the nomination, anyone can nominate anyone. And the nomination started back in July 1st. And it's running up until August 1st. So you, you have two days, two more days to nominate anyone. There is the, the program page that you can read details about. There is the actual nomination form that you can you can recommend someone to be nominated and it this will be closing in two days on august 1st but uh does, okay. it, does it does it close at the beginning of august 1st or the end good point uh i'm not sure but uh but i think that by the time that you might be watching this it will be most likely too late although i want to go <laughs> live with this by tomorrow, August, uh, July 31st. So again, you're gonna have one day if you act quickly, you know. Yeah. Anyway, it's open there, it's been revamped. There will be a lot of new MVPs and with the kind of uh, vibe that is going on in the community right now, I think that we're gonna have a lot of deserving people there as well as, an, an, as new MVPs. Um, yeah, and I, don't rem I don't remember what we said about it before, but uh, if you go to the MVP page at uh, dnnsoftware.com, you will also find honorary MVPs who are people who were uh, MVPs of the past and for various reasons, uh, you know, were not reelected, uh, but you'll find names that you know and people who continue to make contributions uh, to the community and there's a special category of lifetime honorary MVPs, which are the four founders of uh, .NET New Corporation, uh, Sean, Joe, Scott, and Nick. Uh, so if you, you go there, you can find who have been the movers and shakers in the DNN community. And with the nominations, you have a chance to uh, propose the name of somebody that you think deserves being part of that group. Awesome, awesome. Okay, great. So nomination is here. This is done. Another page that I want to bring to your attention is a new one that was put together by our friend Clint Patterson. It's a page that that uh, aggregates information about the different ecosystem advisory groups. We have the awareness, the developers, the partners, and the technology groups. So you're gonna find details about each one of those groups. You're gonna find who are the members of each one of those groups uh, by checking the member list of each one of the groups. I just realized that I'm not a, I'm not a member of anyone, so I have to send an email to Clint about that. But but that's okay. That's okay. Uh, that's okay. Clint, I thought you were member. part of the uh, uh... I thought you were part of the awareness group. I am, but what I'm saying is that the list that is there, my name is not there, oh, but that's oh. okay. That's okay. <laughs> maybe maybe, anyway. maybe he, he, he stuck it in the end in your name and you didn't recognize it. Maybe, 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 you know, he put in a completely different spelling. Anyway, so again, if you want to get more information about the groups, you have this page here as a reference point. And if you want to join, there is a join a group button right there and then what yeah, else there, there are a couple of there are a couple of uh unofficial or developing advisory groups there's the group that's working on the uh, core modules that we mentioned we're gonna, earlier we're gonna, mention, we're gonna hold on, yeah, hold on a thought 
I'm not going to say anything about that, but there's also a uh, GDPR group that's uh, either underway or in the process of getting underway to uh, make sure that uh, DNN is appropriately uh, fitting into the requirements of the European GDPR uh, requirements. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Right. Okay. So uh, let's talk a little bit about videos and recordings that have been done lately. And as usual, the technology advisory group, they meet every single week. So there are three recordings there uh, with a little blurb put together by Clint that kind of summarize what, what went on on that meeting, because I mean, I recognize that not everybody will have the time to go through, or actually he recognized that not everybody will have the time to go through each and each and every video of those. And so there is a short summary there. But again, if you are a more technically oriented person with some coding, you know, uh, chops, if you want to participate, if you want to watch, and if you want to get to know what's going on technology wise, uh, this is a group to be part of or to watch the replay. So there are three recordings in the past month. And so that's the technology advisory group. And then there is, as Joe was mentioning, there is a group forming. It's, it's well, in a way it's already formed, but I think that there is, it's not, I think it's official already, but it's not listed anywhere officially as one of the, you know, ecosystem groups, but it's the core modules dev team group, the team that is being led by our friend Daniel Velades from Montreal. And it's about revamping and reorganizing and pushing forward the old core modules, making sure that they are compatible with newer versions of DNN, make sure that people that, you know what, join the ecosystem, that they can find a good set of free modules, free extensions to get them started on. So it's a, it's a great group to be part of. Uh, Joe, you are a, a member of that, correct? Uh, I have been attending the meetings. Uh, I am, I have not actually been doing any work. So I'm a freeloader in that group. Uh, awesome. Yeah, I've uh, volunteered to help shepherd uh, uh, one of the modules, but uh, it's probably the one that needs the least work at this point. I'm not sure. Okay, but in, in any case, it, there is always room for people to, even, even, even if it's testing, even if it's, you know, QA, but, but there is room for people there. So again, very, very interesting group to be involved on. Uh, yeah, all of the all of these groups uh, need uh, contributions from people who are actually willing to contribute. Um, so if you have an interest in participating or one of these areas seems to have a need that you know about that isn't being addressed, uh, step up, volunteer, and uh, run with it. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay. Great. So, uh, so fried our, our friends at so fried, it's another, you know, meetup that they had and they were talking about, there was a presentation by Matt Rutledge and he, he presented about this DNN generator tool built on in Yeoman, Yeoman, yeah, that's 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 the one. Yeoman built on, and what it does is it creates the the basic structure of a modern module, a modern DNN module. You know, there are different ways to put together modules for DNN. This is yet another one, however, a very modern approach, very modern style. If you are a module developer, you should definitely check it out. Check out this presentation. Very easy to put together now a basic structure of a module. Love the template from Chris Hammond. Again, it has been there for, for years and years. And this is one more you know, approach that can be taken when 
creating modules very modern one and that was the main presentation of the Sofry group here is the GitLab and yeah that's the one okay um, I actually I'd love to give this a shot you know give this a try I, I, I want to do that last video that I had to bring up is the one from our last Tadak meetup which was done beginning of uh, July yes and it was a presentation done by myself talking about DNN upgrades how we do that at Despo, what is our approach what is our step-by-step -step. upgrades can be very simple very easy if you're lucky but can be a bit more complicated and we have an approach to deal with complicated upgrades well we have a general approach that even if it's a couple if it if it ends up being a complicated uh, upgrade we have a step by step that will hopefully help you get over the hurdles that you may you may come across when you are upgrading i went through the whole thing it's a, an hour long presentation i really went through the nitty gritty details of how we do upgrades talking about the Doug, as I said, we are on July 31st, August 1st is the next one. So we are just two days away from the next one. I have some swag that I'll be, you know, giving out during the next meetup. This is one of those swags. Uh, we got some free swags from the, one second. From the code magazine. I have a, a free, uh, a few uh, free editions of codes that I want to send to the members. So again, if you want to get one of those, you better you better come to the meetup. Uh, they they sent they sent us about ten magazines. So we have some budgets to mail that to you. That's the July August magazine. If you are a coder, you should get this. You know because it's for uh -huh, ta -da, coders. So just to entice you to come and join us live on Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. in the next presentation will be done by our friend, Mike Smeltzer, and he'll be talking about workflows in DNN. You know that there is an workflow engine built into DNN. Some of the interfaces, the, the admin, uh, no, views and things are only available in Evoke, but there are ways that you can make them surface on the core DNN. And I think that that's a little bit of what Mike will be sharing with us. He'll be sharing his own custom module and how we can leverage that. So it will be a very good meetup. Yes. Okay. Talking about events, talking about upcoming events. I should, well, that's the meetup. I should definitely talk about, I mean, don't want to overextend myself here, but just saying that Denver has been set as the yet again, uh, the home for the next DNN summit, which will go from February 19th to February 23rd, 2019. We are, you know, uh, what, about six months or seven months away from that. But it's good to see that the group is already, you know, no, the organizing committee is already moving things around a little bit. I, you know, got some communication going on as well. Got some sort of invitation going on as well that I'm, you know, considering there. But yeah. So anyway, it's going on next year. Denver, love Denver, love the mountains, love the slopes. I love the slopes, even though I have never been there, but I love them. So. <laughs> Anyway, well, anything, I, I, dusted, add, I dusted off the winter shirt uh, uh, to wear for this. Of course, uh, of course, you, of course, you. Yeah, I, and, I can see yours uh, there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Fortunately, on July the 30th, the high temperature in Maryland today was about 75 degrees. It's pretty rainy, so I'm not sweating excessively of wearing the shirt. <laughs> uh, just just a couple of things just a couple of things to say about it uh 
go to dnnsummit.org and make sure you register for the newsletter so you'll get all the latest news as soon as it's available. And with uh, between now and the end of August, I would expect to see uh, a newsletter from the organizers with a lot of detail. Uh, the call for speakers uh, at the event should be open and uh, a timetable for other things like uh, when you can register uh, when you can make room reservations and that sort of thing. Uh, the 19th through 23rd means that the 22nd and the 23rd are DNN on the slopes in Winter Park. Uh, I have not been there yet either, uh, but uh, I think that event is, is at least as interesting as, as the conference. Uh, but it's a, a good time to get to know people uh, have fun, uh, sing songs, and uh, the official troubadour of DNN Summit, I believe, is already working on a new song uh, for that event. He just doesn't quite know what the subject is because nobody's told him yet. But uh, if you're if you're serious about DNN, if you want to learn about DNN, uh, this is a great place to get. Uh, three days of uh, really first class education, uh, meet people face to face uh, and put together your list of resources of people you can talk to uh, um, after you go home. Awesome. Um, and awesome, I think awesome. there will be a couple of, a couple of new features uh, this year and I'll pass the word back to the organizing committee not to tell you too much Addison. okay okay i can see that you you're just teasing <laughs> there you're just you're just you no know, teasing but that's fine that's fine okay no, so, I'm, no I'm just i'm just making up stuff at this point oh, okay something is, has, has been committed okay awesome awesome so we're gonna keep bringing uh, updates about that as we go along during this year okay so it's the fun time of our it's the, the fun segment of our show here. However, I truly think that this will be a very easy one for Joe because he already kind of hinted on something there that told me that uh, this will be a piece of cake. Uh, but I think I'm going to go with it anyway because... I want to hear the music. Oh, but no, the music will come once I gave you the yeah. options, okay? So, but that's, it's a good reminder. The music, the soundtrack we have. Let me just keep it open here. Okay, so the segment is called Guess the Fake. However, I wanted to, I, I spin this a little bit this time around. It will not be Guess the Fake, but actually Guess the Real One. So we're going to have... We're going to have four fakes and one real. Again, this will be a piece of cake based on what I've heard so far from Joe. But I'm going to say anyway, guess the real one. So this guess the real is about who, whom from the, those five individuals that at one point or another were very active in the DNN community. They stopped being active. They no longer wrote, or they no longer write blog posts. However, one of these individuals, he or she wrote a blog post recently. Uh, and I can see maybe by the looks of Joe, he already knows the one, but I'm gonna say anyway, because maybe, maybe you want to join us playing that as well, you know? Maybe you want to see if you can guess that. So again, People that at some point were very active in the community, writing blogs, right, center, left. They no longer do that. But recently, this person came back to life, at least from a blogging standpoint. I'm going to start with the real deal, Sean Walker. Did he, did he write a recent blog post? Did he write something about talking about .NET Core in DNN in a way to move forward? Maybe he did, maybe he didn't. Let's talk about this other guy. Let's talk about Scott 
Will Hike, Will Heights, one of the founding fathers of DNN. Did he come back lately? Is he talking about the resurgence of the D of DNN as a community? I think he did. That's the second one. The third one. The third one. Sebastian Leopold. Did he come back talking about GDPR? About volunteers that he may need some help? You know, he might be putting something together. Did, did, did Sebastian come back to blogging again? That's, a, that's the third one. The fourth one. Michael Washington. Have you heard about Michael Washington, Joe? Before? <laughs> I've had dinner. I've had dinner with Michael Washington. I have never had the pleasure to to uh, talk to him face to face. However, Michael Washington is someone that wrote books about the you know. Has he hasn't been very active lately, but maybe has he come back to live in terms of blogging for DNN? Did he did he talk about uh Microsoft bought framework, calling Microsoft bought framework from DNN. Maybe he did, maybe he didn't. What about Charles Nurse? Charles Nurse, who does not remember Charles Nurse? <laughs> did he build a module, a blogging module, running on Azure that does use SQL Server to save a few bucks on SQL Server resources? Did he write about that? Maybe he did. But those are the five ones. He should have. He, he should have. He should have. Maybe he wrote somewhere else. Maybe he wrote in the DNN community blog. I don't know. But it's Sean, Scott, Michael, Sebastian, or Charles. Which one is the one that came to live, <laughs> back to <Yeah>. live? <laughs> John knows already. But I'm going to play the little song that I have here as a soundtrack. And I'm going to give five seconds here. <laughs> Am I supposed to? Come on, Joe. Get over. Get over with. Well, well, um, one of the people that you mentioned actually showed up in a meeting I was at um, recently. Um, I'm talking. I'm talking it's about not him. And I'm it's talking not about him. blog posting. I know, uh, Sebastian. Yeah, Sebastian. Sebastian. <laughs> Sebastian is is, uh, is gathering people around GDPR. GDPR. I don't remember what is it, st it stands for. It's uh, but the line is that European General Data Protection, protection. Regulation. Yes. Yes. Uh, you know that um, new. That yeah, and, yeah, and Sebastian has actually put together a working group that's begun meeting uh, on this topic. Um, I got very interested in GDPR within the last GDPR within the last couple of weeks because one of my clients uh, wanted to have a GDR appropriate uh, cookie banner uh, on their website. Uh, so I've been uh, looking at available modules uh, to do that rather than try and figure out all the things I need to do and do it. Um, I won't put out any uh, uh, recommendations at this point, but I, I'll tell you the two modules that appeared at the top of my list uh, after that was uh, uh, one from uh, Jeff Barlow. Uh, and uh, he's uh, DNN Consulting is the name of his company, I believe. And one from NA Development, who are the makers of uh, Cart Viper and an event uh, management uh, module. Uh, those are the two I'm looking at uh, to awesome. see which one has the, yeah, they're all version one. So, uh, awesome, awesome. But, but, but yeah, uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, so Sebastian really never disappeared. Sebastian has 
has been the go-to guy in the DNN forums uh, for many more years than I can remember. Uh, so uh, it's it's good to see him uh, stepping into a more visible role in the community again. Awesome. Yep. 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 Uh, but yeah, as you said, he never disappeared. He he was always there. Just that from a blogging post standpoint, he was not right. very active there. But again, great to see that side of uh, Sebastian as well. Okay, so moving towards here, I'm just gonna do a quick quick uh, mention on the tips of the week that I have been pushing forward. I've done uh, four in the past four weeks. It's a weekly thing so usually at the end of the month you're gonna have four but sometimes i'm not that uh no that um regular let's put it this way so there is a a, a tip about premium modules what are what are premium modules on the end what what is the use of that so uh that's one of those the next one is about uh, recovering archived code plex projects. I have a friend of mine that a few weeks ago asked, you know, was a bit lost, kind of. I mean, how do I get this module, the source, or and it was an archive. And I said, I run to his rescue. I put together <laughs> a little <laughs> how to, and I said, you know what, Joe. You're not the only one that deserves to know that. I have to spread the words. So again, I put together a quick video on how you can download and recover archived Codeplex projects. Uh, yep, that's what. And, and actually, actually, you had done something some time ago about that, which I discovered, I think, while you were doing your tutorial. Because uh, I had some, I had some notes. Maybe you just told me. Uh, you know, six or eight months ago. Uh, very, very helpful to know when you need to know it. When you when you need to know it. Yes, yes. Not that you're not going to be watching a 10 minutes video, seven or eight minutes video. Just, <laughs> just FYI. No, I, I know that. And I ramble. I still ramble a lot. So, but again, someone said the other day in a comment that my eight minutes video could be two minutes. I know. I know. But that a, that a good thing, that a great thing with YouTube is that you can change a channel with a click of a button and you can go somewhere else that will be more straight to the point, that they don't ramble like I ramble, that they don't blah, 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 like a blah, blah, blah. And I love blah, blah, blah. And that's it. <laughs> and if you want to be more straight to the point, you can have your own show. Anyway, that's my two cents. Uh, okay, so next one here, page URL management. That was another tip of the week, and this is, you know, this goes this goes hand in hand, Joe, with uh, what you mentioned about this problem that you had with uh, creating lots of entries in the in the when you rename when you move pages around. Again, I think that this is a problem with DNN nine one. I don't think it's a problem with DNN nine nine two anymore. But I might be wrong there, but in, in any case. Okay, the fourth one and the last one is how to keep your DNN sites alive. There is a keep alive file in the root of any DNN site, unless you have deleted that. And the purpose of that is to help to keep your DNN site alive. So you may want to check this video here to see what's the use of that. Okay, so those were the tips. I just want to give a bit of a plug here to the Indian Hero, two new videos uh, in the past, two new series in the past month, one from Andy from the Indian Creative, he put together how to develop a detached DNN front end with React.js using two sexy content, so uh, a very well put together module, oh, sorry, the tutorial video on how to do that with DNN to have a, a kind of a headless uh, detached DNN uh, implementation. Very good one. And look who's, look who came back. Look who came <laughs> back here. Scott, Scott is not here, but good to Scott. He came up with a new two video series on caching best 
practices so best practices with uh, caching on when you develop modules for DNN. So a good little series from uh, our friend Scott Wilkes. So Scott, very good to see you active. And I know I need to shape up. I know that you don't need to say, I know. Yeah. These, these, Anderson, these guys have jumped up way ahead of you. Uh, yeah, I saw Scott's note uh, about the tutorial went and watched it and then I uh, looked down and saw um, not one but two tutorials from from Andy Stevenson uh, and can I, can I make a shameless plug for your dnnhero.com site uh, no compensation uh, nothing but the compensation goes to the people who view uh, these tutorials uh, for my money the best tutorials on the internet are by Andy Stevenson. Uh, he just does terrific work. And if you want to learn uh, the, the one with React and uh, two like the content is just absolutely terrific. Uh, shows you how to do it. And the next one is promised to show us how you really do react so I'm, I'm looking forward to that one but the one that preceded it is uh a tutorial using uh in the quick theme uh to uh to build the theme and uh if you want to learn how to build a modern theme and if you want to learn what the tools are uh but it's probably about 40 minutes uh, in total. Uh, and uh, just really in a very methodical and straightforward manner shows you how to set up in the quick theme, how to use it and how to build the site. And for icing on the cake is to how to incorporate uh, bootstrap components uh, seamlessly uh, uh, into your skin and there's there's one part where he does it one way and then comes back and does it another way which uh, almost had me standing up in my chair and, and cheering uh, because I'm going why didn't you do it the other way why didn't you do it the other way oh wait he's doing it the other way uh, so uh, uh, yeah good guy. Uh, very good guy if you're yeah so so uh, there is great material at the end in Hero. Uh, and, you know, people like me who have been using the thing going on 12 years at this point, uh, I, I, I will tell you, you can teach a middle-aged to not, not too old dog new tricks. Uh, I mean, it's really, it's really good stuff. And, and here he's you know, giving nice, concise, uh, consumable introductions to uh, modern technology in the context of DNN. I mean, they're really, did I say they're really good? No, you did. I mean, I could not, I could not do uh, <laughs> such a good job as you said, no. Okay, I, I'll be mailing, I'll be, I'll be sending that mail, okay? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Thank you very much again. Those were the plugs and uh, took a little bit longer than anticipated, but that's fine. That's that's all good, all good. And we are here to report good stuff. And if that good stuff ends up being our own good stuff, that's so be it. You know? uh, what's new? What's exciting? What's new? What is exciting? Joe, anything new? Anything exciting there? I think I just went over what I found exciting this past month was some terrific, some terrific material to dig in with. You did. Awesome, awesome. Uh, for my side, this is not ultra new to me, but at this point we have more or less formalized a troubleshooting strategy that we have been using quite a lot with a lot of success at DeskPole. And I'm, I'm, what I'm calling this strategy is the swap strategy. And I'm not going to fully explain the whole thing right now. I'm just going to mention over an overview here because I want to do a tip of the week about that troubleshooting strategy for DNN. Here's what it is in a, in a nutshell. You have a DNN site that has a problem. 
you don't know what that problem is. I mean, you know, there's a, there's an issue, but you, you haven't found the root cause of that. And maybe you're not sure if it's in the site files, if it's in the database. So here's what you can do. You have the problem site and you put together a fresh new DNN site from the same version. If that is a DNN, you know, uh, nine website, and then that has a problem. Then create a fresh new DNN out of the box, DNN nine. So you have the problem one and you have a fresh one. Then this, the swap strategy is change the connection strings of the database and make one point to the other one. Of course, you need also to change the, the, the portal alias as well, but revert, you know, swap the databases run both sides, see what happened there. Again, I'm going to stop right here because I want to go into more details about that in the tip of the week. But this is a uh, this is a very effective strategy that we have been using a lot just this week alone. Sorry, last week alone, we, we helped two clients by using this particular strategy, this, sw this swap strategy to troubleshoot DNN. I'm going to I may I'm, I might trademark that. No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's what's new. That's what's exciting. Um, Joe, can we say our goodbyes here? We can. Uh, I'm awesome. going to. I'm going to. I'm going to be in Canada this time next month. Uh, close by? N no, uh, maybe closer to Mike than to you. We're we're going to go out and tour Nova Scotia. So, talking uh, about yeah, go and meet the guy. Talking about, uh, I mean, that's that's uh, that's good that you remind me, because I we went, uh, you know, in a in a one a face to face meeting here with with Mike Smeltzer, you know, just about father, two weeks ago. I saw the picture, yeah. Yeah, just two weeks ago. It's great to have a face to face. We have had face to face before because we used to work with the same clients, different sides of the same client. Uh, but it was good to, to see him. And again, he will be presenting in just two days for the Tadug. Guys, that's really it. Guys and girls, I don't want to exclude anyone, but I use guys, I mean, for anybody out there. Have a great August. Enjoy summer. Enjoy the rest of summer, the last you know month of summer. Have a, you know, Enjoy the temperature. And we talk again at the end of August. Joe, thank you very much. And... Yep.